So I'm using three colours uh, for my jelly plate printing today. Uh, blue, a burgundy and a yellow. These paints are quite transparent. So as long as I don't put all three on the plate at once, I shouldn't get mud and I'll be able to see down through the layers quite nicely. See I'm cleaning off the stencil here onto the paper and using a baby wipe to clean it off also. The build up of the translucent colours will give you some nice interest and depth. Cleaning the brayer off on a bit of paper. Using the blue and the yellow, which of course is going to give me green. Uh, laying down the stencil, putting the paper in a different area this time, rather than straight in the middle. And if you've got paint left on that brown, just put it back on. There's no point wasting it. You can just blot the um, the jelly print, the jelly plate with paper just to get those little bits of paint up. Here I'm cleaning the stencil again. You've got to be careful of those delicate stencils. They're very easy to get them caught on a baby wipe. Just using the blue this time, and I like that stencil, that's really nice. It's a really nice image that comes off of that stencil. Still some paint on the brayer, so I'm doing another thinner layer. Those layers are really building up nicely now. Just the burgundy. onto the jelly plate and then I'm going to pick up that really wet paint on an area of the of one of the prints and then wiping off that extra excess paint with my finger um, this is the color shaper uh, you can use those for a painting, but um, they're very good for a jelly plate. You can see the jelly plate slipping around a little bit because it's only on the um, that little square of plastic. If you've got a, um, a silicon mat, it's really good to put them on there and it'll stop them from slipping around. See as you take different areas of the plate and leave different shapes behind, uh, it gives you a nice print, a nice shape print to pull that's not even circular.
mask here. I'm just laying the mask down in different areas of the plate and just taking little areas of print and then I can um, pull all the rest later on. See how I'm just laying that edge down? Just to get to the middle of the paper. I'm doing the edges of the, the page. You need to get right to the edge just to make the, the whole page cohesive so you don't have any white space at the edges. those bath oh, what do you call it, a sponge that'll be really great for texturing the paint so I'm just pressing it on there and it's soft enough for the jelly plate also without damaging it and that's got some really lovely texture on that This is like an anti-slip bath mat, um, but I didn't think about, you know, it's got suckers on the bottom, so you've got to be careful with that. But otherwise it did keep, did create quite a nice texture. silicon icing fondant patterning thing I'm not sure how you'd use it for font for fondant but it works really great as a stamp and as a texturing tool for the jelly plate so that's what I'm using it for lazy to get up and get some string or wool so I'm just ripping up the baby wipe here just to lay on the plate and that will create quite a nice pattern for a print Here are the finished pages. You can use them for collage. Um, this is only on just cheap old computer paper and it's held up pretty well. Um, as long as you don't make it too wet, um, the paper should hold up quite well. You could use watercolour paper or a thicker um, sketch paper. You can cut them into squares or circles or strips. And do whatever you want with them. Use them as book covers. They come out really nice. And then if you don't like them, you can do things to them like here I'm picking out areas that I like, circling them, trying to get a good balance of placement. And 
then I'm using some white paint and I'm just going to go around all those shapes that I've created. I'm going to add a little bit of water to that paint just to make it flow freely. And in some areas I think maybe it wasn't quite dry but it did pick up some of the underlying paint and uh, give it tinted it a little bit which is quite attractive anyway. It's just there in the centre you can see it. that off a little bit and then you can add some drips I've got some red drips on one side and then I'm going to flick a little bit of oh, still doing the drips a <laughs> bit of yellow paint flick that on still using the same colors that were in the prints the um, the jelly prints this is the blue paint going on there just flicking some dots of that on there and then I'm doing some um, more drips on that side, a bit of the yellow and red together to make like an orangey drip, and then some of the blue. Just spraying with water just to get those drips dripping. Uh, I'm not going to waste that paint on that palette, so I'm just squishing that onto a page in one of my journals. Uh, a little bit of doodling, just a white gel pen there. Just drawing some circles around it and just some little, little wings. Just some doodling, mindless doodling. And then maybe just some little bits of black in there. And it's finished. And I like that page a lot better now. <laughs> 